We are here as part of our Healthy Living series. Uh, this is our second session. Uh, the theme of this evening is titled Soul Food. Uh, we have an audience tonight uh, in addition to our Facebook audience, so thank you for joining us. Um, before we start the evening, um, all uh, of our COVID-19 uh, protocols and restrictions were followed. The people in attendance um, that are without masks are all fully vaccinated. Uh, and tonight, you're going to be in for a great evening. I want to introduce some of the people that are here this evening. My name is Michael Desjardins. I'm going to be the mic MC tonight for this event. To my right here, we have Carrie Palumbo, clinical dietitian at Griffin Hospital. And our chef this evening is very talented, Daryl Murphy. And we also have um, our um, other uh, coordinator from the kitchen. His name is Remo Santilli. You'll be meeting him at some point this evening also. Um, so before... But without further ado, we're going to get started with our evening. We do have um, a, a plentiful evening ahead with a lot of uh, educational stuff being offered by Carrie and some great food choices that the audience will be able to taste later on. So without further ado, I'm going to get the show started, and we're going to introduce and start off with Carrie Palumbo here. Hi, everybody. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Super excited to be here tonight. Welcome, everybody. Like Mike said, thank you for the introduction. I'm Carrie Ann Palumbo. I'm a registered dietitian at Griffin. Super excited to be here tonight at the Center for Healthy Living. Live class, that's amazing. So um, as part of the Center for Healthy Living, we do promote lifestyle medicine. And one aspect of that is gonna be healthy eating. So that's what I'm gonna get to talk to you about this evening. So up here on our PowerPoint is the Harvard Healthy Eating Plate um, that basically shows um, a picture of a plate and um, I'm gonna go into some details to help you all figure out how to set up a plate as far as diet quality goes and portion size. So here at the Center for Healthy Living, we really promote diet quality and macronutrients. We're not eliminating any food groups or um, discriminating against any food groups. So macronutrients are very essential to get from our diet. All the things that we eat are gonna have um, some macronutrients that I'm gonna be talking about tonight. And these macronutrients help us to walk and talk and think and do all the things that we need to go about our day-to-day -day activity as well as make us feel energized and um, promote good health. So um, as far as this healthy plate goes that hopefully will get up on the screen momentarily, uh, but basically if you can just kind of use your imaginations um, and think of a, a round dinner plate and half of that is going to be our vegetables and our fruits. So that's gonna make up the majority. Then the other quarter is gonna be healthy proteins, and then the other quarter is gonna be whole grains. So tonight I'm gonna to talk to you about what those mean and what that's gonna look like with our soul food menu. So I'm hoping that everybody brought their appetites for soul food as well as some good nutrition info. Um, we'll just keep moving along here as I, I'm assuming you're all imagining this dinner plate that I'm describing um, as well as what's on the dinner plate um, we also would see uh, some healthy oils and fats so again getting back to this idea of macronutrients there's three macronutrients carbohydrates fat and then what, does anybody want to shout out what they think the third macronutrient might be yeah, say it nice and loud and confident, protein. Yeah, so we have our carbs, our fats, and our protein. So as far, oh, thank you, here we go. So um, with the, the healthy oil that you'll see in the corner there, that's gonna provide um, some fats as far as helping with energy, brain function, and protecting our organs, but we do wanna use smaller amounts because calorically it's very dense. And then you're also gonna see water in the corner um, super important for digestion, making sure the nutrients are going where they need to go in our bodies. And a lot of people that I talk to don't drink enough water. And we have to think if we're not drinking water, what are we replacing it with? So a lot of beverages out there, high in calories, high in sugar, and they really don't provide much nutrition outside of that. So we wanna make sure we're limiting things like soda and even juice and getting enough water throughout the day. 
So we're going to focus in on my favorite half, the fruits and vegetables, specifically vegetables, this evening. So it probably isn't going to come as a big surprise to any of you that um, vegetables are good for us. So can I get anybody, a brave audience member, to tell me and everybody else why we think vegetables are so good for us? Fiber, yeah. Mm -hmm. Vitamins, yes, thank you. Oh, man, we got, we got a good audience tonight. Yes, Ex excellent. Um, so when we have reasons for the suggestions that I'm making, it's going to help to motivate you and also get you to stick to these healthier nutrition guidelines. So as far as our vegetables go, the recommended amount is going to be about three to five servings a day. So I tell people, kind of think about, you know, how many vegetables vegetables am I eating throughout the day and try to increase it by one at least for a week and see how that goes. So it, it might sound like a lot to some of you, it might sound like a little, um, but a serving size is going to be one cup of raw vegetables or a half a cup cooked because when we cook them they shrink down so they get a little bit less. Um, in addition to the serving size, really important to get different types of vegetables and different colors. When you have a variety of colors, you're going to get different micronutrients, so different vitamins and minerals with these vegetables. And that might mean trying something new for some of you. Um, and tonight you're in for a treat because with our soul food menu, we have a lot of different options for vegetables, some of which we're going to be cooking for you tonight. And Daryl will show you how to make them as well. So you'll see things like crispy kale, cauliflower potato salad, cauliflower grits, even collard greens and I'd really encourage you if you maybe have tried them in the past and haven't liked them give them another try our taste buds change as we age and again just really important to get different types of vegetables to get the maximum benefit all right so the next quarter of our plate is going to be these whole grains and unfortunately I think a lot of times the carbohydrate macronutrient uh, is thought of as a bad food or unhealthy and I think that's partly because we don't differentiate whole grains from um, refined grains. So with whole grains that's going to be things like brown rice, oatmeal, and those have nutri nutrients in them that are really going to fuel our bodies and our bodies want to run on those kinds of things. So we need to differentiate the refined grains from things like cookies, cakes, pastries from these whole grains that are going to be, um, that I'm going to explain a little bit more about. So has anybody heard the term or the phrase make half your grains whole when talking about a healthy eating pattern? Seeing a few head shakes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what that, more about what that means. Um, with whole grains, I want you to think about big wheat fields. So you got tons of these wheat plants. On the wheat plants is going to be the little tiny part that's edible that we eat. And with that, you get three different parts, the bran, the endosperm, and the germ. And the outer layer and the, the germ, so the bran and the germ, are going to have B vitamins, protein, carbohydrates, healthy fats, lots of really nutrient-dense things that are good for our bodies. Um, then when the grains get processed and refined, food companies actually pull out the bran and the germ, just leaving the middle starchy carbohydrate layer. In my head, I kind of think of it as like a piece of Wonder Bread or white bread that's just, you know, you, you put it in your mouth and it almost kind of just melts right away because it's been stripped of the, the bran and the germ. So we really want to make sure that we're eating more of these whole grains with the carbohydrates, protein, those B vitamins, like I mentioned, for added benefit. So if you're kind of thinking about like, oh, do I include whole grains? Some examples are going to be whole wheat pasta, whole grain or whole wheat bread. We have oatmeal, brown rice, quinoa, things like that. And um, those are all whole grains versus refined, bread, uh, refined grains, which are going to be white bread, white rice, white flour. Um, it can get confusing. So if you're kind of uncertain, you're in the grocery store looking like which is which, um, look at the ingredients and look for that word whole. So whole wheat, whole grain, that's going to be a, a whole grain option. So tonight, with our soul food menu, um, a couple of options to get that whole grain quarter of our plate would be a whole wheat pasta salad or farro, which I don't know if you're all familiar with, but it's a 
whole grain, um, an ancient grain, and we make that into a pilaf with tomatoes. I should say Daryl makes it. I'm not taking credit, but I'm sure it's going to be amazing. <laughs> All right, so then moving right along here, the last quarter of our plate is this healthy protein. Protein is going to be super important for lots of different functions. Um, our bones, our skin, hair, blood, enzymes, lots of really important things. So we're going to want to make sure that we're including that with our meals. And as far as a serving size goes, I know we're thinking about this plate and a quarter of it, but sometimes you might also hear like the size of your hand or your palm or a fist. So that's generally like four to six ounces of protein, even though everyone's protein needs vary a little bit. Um, and of course, size of hand is different, but just to get you some guidelines. Um, and a lot of people come to me and say, you know, I'm eating chicken, I'm so sick of chicken. I feel like I have chicken breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so there's a lot of other options as far as protein goes, and some are listed here. Beans, nuts and seeds, some of the leaner meats like turkey, you could do fish, shellfish, these are all examples of healthy proteins to include. Um, as far as kind of individual needs, because like I said, everyone's going to have different protein needs, I do like to just give this general rule of thumb. If um, we want to optimize the protein that we're eating and have our bodies utilize that the best, you want to get about 30 grams per meal. So a lot of people tell me, you know, I kind of skimp on breakfast and lunch with protein and then I have a lot of protein with dinner. Um, unfortunately, our bodies can't utilize that as well as if we have some protein with breakfast, a little bit with lunch, and with dinner. So just kind of think next time you're having a meal after tonight, um, you know, where's my protein coming from, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And with the soul food menu, um, lots of really good ideas. Uh, barbecue chicken, blackened catfish, Old Bay shrimp. Who's getting hungry out there? Um, so you can see from this list and this menu, we're basically taking this healthy eating plate and taking all the components and putting healthy, good quality macronutrients and micronutrients into this plate. The other thing too is the healthy fats. I had mentioned that's the kind of off the, the plate, but we still want to include it as a macronutrient. Um, so you definitely want to have more of the plant-based oils. Our olive oil, which we're going to be using tonight, um, other plant-based oils, avocado, sunflower oil, those kinds of things. Again, just keeping portion size small because calorically they are dense. Um, so just to get your mental image of this picture. So again, tomorrow when you're going to have a, a meal or you're doing a little meal prepping this weekend, you can think about, okay, what part of my meal is coming from the vegetables, the whole grains, and the healthy proteins, and really just focusing on this quality of um, our macronutrients. All right, any questions? All right, thank you all so very much. Awesome, Carrie. Thank you very much. Let's have a round of applause for Carrie Palumbo. Excellent audience. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm salivating a little bit here. So now um, we're going to move on to the uh, live presentation by our chef, Daryl Murphy. And he will uh, take questions and interact with you as we go. So please feel free to uh, reach out uh, with a question. I will hand the mic to you and we'll be able to hear any questions you have. Nothing is a dumb question. Please feel free to ask, because Daryl's very entertaining and very intelligent on this topic. So, without further ado, Chef Daryl. Hi, <laughs> That's okay. Technology, technology. I'm good now. Let's, I think you're good. All now. right. So, please, everyone, feel like you're at my home, your guest at my home. Um, at any moment, you can ask a question. Uh, I'll try to answer it the best of my knowledge, um, and we will get started. So, the first recipe that we will be doing is the cauliflower potato salad. Now, I'm personally extremely fond of potato salad. 
Okay, so any uh, family gathering, if the potato salad is not there, Chef Darrell is going to be upset, extremely disappointed. My mother knows this, my grandmother knows this, my father, everybody knows. All right, so um, we're going to start, and I'm going to show you how quickly this all goes along. We're going to start, we have some cauliflower here. Now, when you're in the grocery store, you can buy the florets, or you can buy a head of cauliflower. If you buy the florets, nine times out of ten, it's already going to be washed and cleaned. If you feel like you want to wash it again, wash it again, that's fine. Um, if you buy a head, we want to make sure that we're looking at that head of cauliflower and there's no blemishes on it. The green leafy parts are not wilted, they're not bruised, they're not soft. Um, and that all speaks to how fresh your cauliflower is. All right, so we have a fresh diced cauliflower here. We're going to put into some water on the stove that's already boiling. Um, and this is only going to be in there for a couple of minutes. So I want to show you how fast that moves along. All right. So while the cauliflower is going, what we'll do is we'll make our um, dressing um, that goes on the potato salad. So we'll start with, let's go by the recipe. I don't want to skip ahead. So we'll go with the onions first. Add that to the bowl. And then we have the mayo. And this is all pre-measured out. I would urge you to please use your measuring devices at home. I know that your mom, your grandmother taught you how to cook. She never measured anything out. That's only because she's been cooking since she was a little girl. And 60 years later, she knows what a tablespoon of salt looks like. You know what I mean? So don't think that, oh, she does it this way. I could do it this way, too. That's a lot of experience that's in that kitchen, okay? All right. So after the mayo, we have mustard. So, like I said, all we're doing now is making the dressing. This is something that you can do at home really quick. Uh, bring it to, you know, picnic, barbecue, family reunion. I will tell you ahead of time that you're probably going to get a couple of side eyes when you tell them it's cauliflower and not potato. They're going to, I'm not trying this. Uh, I don't want this. Why are you taking something that's perfectly fine and making it healthy? You're going to get a lot of that, and that's fine. All right, so we're going to add the relish. Mix that all together. Now, this recipe doesn't call for it, but I will say that if you're asking me, Chef Darrell, what else he would put in this potato salad, it should definitely have some vinegar in it, some uh, apple cider vinegar to be specific, okay? Um, it gives it um, a bit of tartness that most salads have, vinaigrettes, any salad that you have has some type of tartness to it. Um, almost every salad that you make has some type of vinegar in it in some form, whether it's coleslaw, whether it's potato salad, whether it's macaroni salad. Vinegar goes in almost all of them, all right? Um, because the recipe didn't call for it, I didn't put it in, all right? We're going to add our chives in here. And another secret ingredient I like to use is a lot of people put paprika on their potato salad. I like Old Bay, extra seasoning. It's all about flavor, just a tad. You don't need a lot. And then we'll garnish it with the Old Bay at the end, all right? I also put a little parsley in it because at Griffin, we like things to look a certain way. So we put a little parsley in that. And we mix it all together. And then this will be our dressing. Finish it with a little grandma's pinch of salt, all right? All right, so like I said, this moves along pretty quickly. So um, from the start of just entering the cauliflower into the water, it's just about done. And I can pull that off now, drain it off, uh, drain it, and uh, I normally would cool it. But because we have the magic of culinary kitchen, I already have some ready to go. So we don't have to cool this down. So we're just going to strain it. And something else that pays, plays a part in how long your cauliflower cooks is the size of the florets. So you want to make sure that they're all pretty much similar in size so that they all cook evenly. If you have a bigger piece, it's going to be a little crunchier. If you have smaller pieces, they might be a little mushy. So now we just enter this into our dressing.
and all of the guys at the kitchen thought it would be a good idea to leave the egg out for the demonstration because it would smell up this whole room. So we left the egg out just for that. But um, the one that was pre-made for you does have egg in it. And there you have it. Now because this is hot and I didn't let it cool, it's going to thin out your dressing up just a little bit. All right? Um, however, it's, you're still going to have the desired flavor of the potato salad without the calories of the potato salad. That's what everybody was supposed to clap. No calories. <laughs> right? And that's what, that's what this is about, right? Taking things that we're accustomed to, that we're comfortable with, making them a little bit healthier so that we don't have to feel as guilty or we don't have to feel as sluggish after a meal or as bloated after a meal, uh, as tired after a meal. Um, it, it really makes a difference. So whenever you have, you know, something that's a little bit healthier and you eat it, you feel the difference right away, right? We get up from the table and we're like, wow, that was, I feel great. I feel a little light versus the, you know, I'm fast in the pants, go find the couch, you know, put on the clicker. That's what my grandmother calls the clicker. And, uh, and then you, you know, you're out for the day. So that is our cauliflower potato salad, all right? Next, we're gonna move on to the kale, crispy kale. Now that's probably one of the easiest, this is probably one of the easiest recipes that I can possibly show anyone, right? So what we have here, and because I know how the cameras are angled, I'm gonna do this. So what we have here is just some kale that we cut up into bite-sized pieces, right? And um, we drizzle with a little olive oil and you season it with salt and pepper. Now, if you have uh, a seasoning that you've been using, because we all kind of cook in like phases of, we really like this right now, or we, we're really cooking Italian right now, or we're really cooking Caribbean food right now. So we have a bunch of seasonings that we use. It doesn't have to be just salt and pepper. Uh, you can use whatever spice blend that you've purchased from your local grocery store that you think is really good. You've tried it on vegetables before, and it's, oh, I really like this on my vegetables. You could do it on your kale chips. Um, keeping things fresh and keeping them new to you uh, will really help you from the feeling of, oh, this again, oh, I have to, the greens again, or, oh, you know, more salad, or, you know, let's keep it fresh, keep it new. So. Putting different types of spices and seasonings on your kale chips will help you keep that fresh and new. And it's very simple to do. So as you see, these are really bite-sized pieces. Also, what I would ask you to do is kind of massage the pieces. Um, that helps it from being so fibrous. And um, kale could be sometimes a little tough, especially around the stem. Um, but if you massage it, you won't have those issues, all right? Um, the recipe calls for uh, us to um, take all of this off of the stem. I left it because I... I just like the stems whenever they get a little crispy and they're just delicious. So, um, and you'll find that you'll you'll do recipe you'll have recipes at home and you'll you know you'll cook something for the first time and you'll say hey maybe I should try this. That's the beauty in culinary and cooking that you don't have to do things just one way. There's several ways to skin a cat when it comes to cooking, right? So, you know, let's say you want these chiffonade, which would mean um, in strips fine little strips. It almost looks like confetti. You could do it that way. Maybe you want bigger pieces. You want big chips. You can cut the pieces a little bit bigger. Whatever works for you um, typically would be, you know, what you would do for your kale chips. Uh, once it's olive oiled, seasoned with salt and pepper, they go back in the oven. And once it goes back into the oven, um, for however long it says 10 to 15 minutes what you're looking for is for the leafy parts to be a little roasted looking not black because that would mean you burned it but you want it a little crispy looking uh you've all had roasted vegetables and you know how it caramelizes right it's the same thing that happens uh with kale so almost every vegetable has um a percentage of sugar in it um and whenever they caramelize in the oven that's the sugar that's coming through those vegetables um, which makes vegetables a little bit sweeter. So if you have the grandkids over, uh, nieces and nephews over, they typically, you know, you, your parents always tell you they don't like to eat the vegetables. Try roasting them. It makes them a little bit sweeter. Um, they, might, they might like those a little bit better, right? Versus us steaming them 
or boiled beets like my mom used to do to me. It's dreadful. But roasted beets I love, you know, but a uh, steamed beet, I sat there for hours because that's the kind of mother I had. You weren't going to get up from the table until the meal was completely finished. So um, she's the complete opposite with her grandkids. They can do whatever they want. They don't have to finish. They can stand in the, ch the chair at the dinner table. Nothing happens. But I think that's the magic of being a grandparent, right? All right, any questions about those two recipes? Because um, that's pretty much the demo. No? Anything. Anyone. How about any of the recipes, actually, if you flip through? So we have the blackened catfish recipe. We have um, the farrow recipe. We have any questions about those at all? Or any questions, period. So in the, in the spirit of we're doing soul food cooking, right? What are some things that we could do with soul food that would be a little bit healthier? Instead of frying, let's try air frying, right? Let's try roasting a little bit more. So um, most of you know because you, you work at the hospital, you know that we do not have a fryer. However, we do bread things and we still do crispy entree items, right? Crispy chicken tenders, crispy chicken sandwiches. There's techniques that you can use to make those items still crispy and not fry them, right? So one of the things you can do is you take your breadcrumbs, you season them with your seasoning, you add a, a, a little olive oil on them, and you toast them ahead of time. Once you toast them, you take them out. Now you bread your chicken, bread your shrimp, uh, your fish, and you put it back in the oven and cook the fish. Now you certainly have that crisp on it that you're looking for. You didn't even have to fry it. So there's, there's plenty, there's always, there's always ways. Now, whether or not we want to conform to those ways is the, is the difficult part, right? We've, we've grown attached. Some of these recipes are nostalgic. You know, this is the way I grew up eating these things and now I have to change it. So I would tell you as a recently 40, turning 40 year old man, I have to eat differently now. I just, I just do, you know? I get out of the bed a little bit slower than I used to, you know? Uh, playing with the kids, I'm sore the next day. I, it's never happened to me, but it's happening now all of a sudden. So um, I, I thought it was a, a fine time to, to make some diet changes and to just live a healthier lifestyle. So, you know, it's not always uh, what's best for our stomach, but what's best for our bodies overall. Anyone? I, I can keep going. No? All right. So what we'll do is uh, we have a beautiful spread for you guys. Um, if you would allow me a moment or two, I will get that all together for you, and then you can taste some of these delicious items that we prepare for you, okay? And if anybody has a, qu a question while I'm doing that, please feel free to, to, to shout it out. You are in my house. There is no uh, volume laws or, or anything like that, okay? Mike? Absolutely. I'm going gonna, I'm okay. to give you the mic, sir, so everyone can hear you, okay? I'm going to give you the mic. Mike gave you the mic. <laughs> Like, what about uh, nut milks? You, uh, I saw milk up there. You want to minimize the amount of milk uh, you uh, take in. But what about, uh, um, say, yeah, oat milk, um, uh, almond milk, without sugar, you know, unsweetened? Yeah, so that's an excellent question. Um, and the... Nut milks are definitely gaining in popularity. I feel like you go out, you go to get a coffee, and one of the options is, you know, oat milk or almond milk. So um, there's definitely some differences among them. I would encourage you to do unsweetened, like you mentioned, because um, some of the flavors are going to add sugar to them. Um, one thing with some of the nut milks, there's actually a lot less protein than in cow's milk. So it kind of depends on your personal preference. Um, if you need more protein, um, you might want to go for the cow's milk. If you have lactose intolerant and you don't feel that well after you drink the cow's milk, then maybe one of the, the nut milks that's unsweetened would be a better choice for you. So it, it's kind of individual, um, but just like you said, go with the unsweetened. If you like the taste of it, some of them actually taste pretty good. Um, so yeah, that would be my answer for you, um, but still, the majority of your drink should be coming from water. And eggs. Uh, I didn't see mm -hmm. eggs there. I might have met eggs. Yeah, so... Um, I know that they've been in favor, out of favor. They seem to, I know. Decade, they 
poor eggs, I feel like, don't eat them, eat them, don't eat them. Um, so that would have gone under the protein, the, the quarter of your plate that's a protein. Um, the most recent research actually shows that eggs are okay. Um, initially, we had thought that cholesterol coming from food would increase the cholesterol in our blood, but it's actually saturated fats from foods that are going to make our blood cholesterol go up. So um, eggs are, I think, a fine source of protein um, if you want to include those. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, thank you. Great questions. Appreciate Excellent it. Excellent question. Oh, we have another question here. Let me pass the mic over to this young man. Um, juices, fruit juices, mm -hmm. pasteurized versus fresh, also in consideration of the sugar amount in, in both. Yeah, so um, juices in general just have a lot of sugar in them. Um, and one of the issues is, you know, if you have a glass of orange juice versus the whole orange, something that you're going to be missing with that is going to be the fiber. So, um, it just the way our bodies digest juice, you think about like, you know, you can kind of slug it back kind of quickly versus it's going to take you a while to eat an orange or eat an apple. So just right off the bat from digestion, it's going to be quicker because we're not chewing it. We're not taking our time. So that's going to mean that your blood sugar is going to go up because you're having more sugar more quickly. So generally, I, I really encourage people to eat more of the whole fruits rather than juices. Um, and as far as like the pasteurized or not pasteurized go, um, that doesn't really come into play with the sugar. They, it still would affect your blood sugar the same way. Right, but in terms of vitamins, um, in the pasteurized versus non-pasteurized. Yep. So um, for just to clarify, when we pasteurize things, that means that they're treated at a higher temperature. So there's concern that if um, a food or a drink is exposed to a lot of heat, it's going to break down vitamins and minerals. Um, so again, I guess I go back to, I think the, the whole fruit is your best bet because from a, a safety foodborne illness point of view, we do want to pasteurize things, but there is the concern of, am I getting the nutrients with it? Um, but just kind of big picture thinking about the sugar that the juice is going to give, I would say whole fruit. Yeah, thank you for the question. Excellent. Does anyone else have a question for Carrie? Chef Daryl is hard at work trying to get our food spread put together for us. Yeah, looking good. Yeah. Getting there. Getting there's, there. There's a lot of confusion out there with nutrition. And I feel like, you know, with the egg example, you hear one thing one day, somebody's promoting this the next day. So I really appreciate the questions. And, you know, it's, it's great that you take this opportunity to, to ask me while I'm here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that. Like, what is that a good alternative to milk or something? Or? Yeah, so the, the question was asking you about kefir, um, which is sort of like a thinned out yogurt drink that you would see in the, the yogurt milk section of the grocery store. Um, so it actually has a lot of sort of similarities to milk just in the fact that it's got protein, it's a good source of calcium. Um, one thing that separates it, though, is it's got a lot of probiotics, and I feel like probiotics are kind of one of those um, uh, nutrients or foods, uh, bacteria, actually, that's gaining a lot of um, popularity. We, we're hearing a lot about that. So with probiotics, it basically um, is the good bacteria in our guts that's going to help us to digest all these foods and the healthy foods that I mentioned. So um, I, actually, I think it's a great option, um, especially if you're making a smoothie or, um, you know, if, if for a, a milk substitute, if you're looking to get a little bit more probiotic in your um, daily intake. Um, it's actually, it's lactose free, so it's easy to digest. The, um, the protein, the calcium, but I would say the plain is going to be better. There's some flavors. Um, so if it's fruit flavored, it's going to have more sugar in there. So, um, yeah, no, another great question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. When I'm cooking with uh, olive oil tonight, yeah. and I've heard that um, some canola oils and certain other oils are less than healthy. So besides olive oil, what other oils are best to cook with health-wise? Health yeah, so um, I do think of olive oil as kind of like the gold standard, um, especially when thinking about heart health. We really want to make sure that we're getting unsaturated fats. Um, and that was sort of getting back to that egg question again, too. I had mentioned the saturated fats. Um, you know, that would promote more of um, 
like when we think of someone having high cholesterol. So the unsaturated fats, um, olive oil, canola oil, um, also avocado oil, sunflower oil, and maybe we can get Chef Daryl. I know he's, he's at heart at work here. I feel like I'm the brain, he's the brawn tonight. Um, <laughs> But um, as far as like smoke points go for some of these oils, because you know some of them we're going to use for a dressing, um, and then some we're going to use with a higher heat to maybe saute some protein or some vegetables. So right. I don't know if you would like to speak on the the smoke points of. Sorry sure. to put you on the spot here. No, 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 I just, no worries. I want to so include olive, you. Olive oil has um, um, a pretty low smoke point, so you don't want to really um, grill with olive oil, you don't want to broil with olive oil, or things that you like have extreme heat circumstances. So sauteing is not one of those things, so olive oil is fine for sauteing. Um, vegetable oil works best with um, broiling, um, grilling, and things of that nature. So um, when it comes to like the olive oils, all your vegetables, um, olive oil is great for that. Um, sauteing, like we said before, marinating things, olive oil is fine for all of that. Salad dressings as well. Um, I will say though, with olive oil and salad dressings, um, once you refrigerate it, it kind of congeals a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so once it uh, comes out and you kind of let it sit for at room temperature for a little bit, that goes goes right away. Okay, so a lot of people, oh, what happened to my dressing? It's you know, it's just the olive oil, kind of congeals a little bit. Okay. Yeah. No, Thank absolutely. you. Great question. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and definitely. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, you know, our bodies are made up of a ton of water, 60% of water. So we want to make sure that we're taking in enough to support um, lots of functions. So um, just you know, as far as what you were saying with bringing nutrients to cells, water just helps with digestion. So um, as, food, as we eat foods and it moves through our system, basically our bodies have to do something with that. And when they're functioning and working at their best, they're going to take the nutrients and bring it to different parts in our body that need those nutrients. Um, and water is just kind of a, a shuttle to, to help with that process. Um, and I know it's, you know, some people tell me they, they don't like the taste of water. It's a chore to drink it. Um, a couple of suggestions that I've told people, um, you know, when we like things, we're more likely to do them. Just like we talked about with the vegetables. If you like vegetables, you're going to be so much more likely to eat them. Um, so with water, you know, adding some flavor and this is a great time of year for, um, like fresh strawberries, adding them to the water. Um, my mint is coming up right now, so you could do like mint and cucumber water. Um, also, some people find that cold water is a lot easier to drink. I know it sounds like so basic and silly, but they're like, oh, I love a nice glass of cold water. So put a, a, a pitcher in the fridge and have it ready to go. Um, another thing, you want to make it easy and convenient. So if you're at a desk most of the day or you have a favorite chair or somewhere that you are, make sure that you have a bottle of water or some sort of water with you um, just to remind you. Um, and then one other kind of, I don't know, this is sort of fun that some people enjoyed. Um, they're like, I can't keep track of how much water I'm drinking. So I told them, like, have a, a container and either put like an elastic band on it to be like, oh, I had one for the day or some sort of way to mark it um, just so you can kind of keep better track of it. And the other thing is the more water we drink, our bodies get used to it and like it. So you're going to find that if you start drinking more water, you're going to crave it. You're going to feel like, oh, I'm thirsty. And it's going to be your body's way of saying, hey, I like that you're drinking more water. You know, keep it coming. So, yeah. Thank you. Great audience tonight. We appreciate the questions and feedback. All right. I have a question. Yeah. So sometimes I'll see on um, on mass marketed packaged cereals, mm -hmm. whole grains. Yeah. Is that is that actually good for you? And then how do you compare whole grains to fiber content? Yeah. So um, you have to be tricky, or you have to be careful because marketing can be tricky. Um, but if you see that little stamp that's it's yellow and then it has like a brown wheat field or wheat plant on there, I think there's a couple. Um, that's gonna mean that it's a good source of whole grains. Um, 
So a lot of times packages will say like whole grains or good source of whole grains. That stamp is going to be a better indicator that, hey, it's actually a, a whole grain um, because marketing can be deceiving at times. Um, so then to check as far as the fiber goes, um, you want to look on the nutrition fact label, see what the grams of fiber says, um, and basically a source of good fiber and likely a, a better source of whole grains is going to have at least three grams of fiber um, listed under total fiber. And sometimes you'll see things that say uh, soluble or insoluble fiber. Don't get too bogged down with that. If it's more than three grams of total fiber, it's going to be a, a better choice for um, a whole grain. So, yeah, thank you. Lettuce yeah. seeds. One more question then? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. No, great. The only question I have is being in that plate that you were showing me. The, the Harvard plate, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So a good portion of that she is fresh. Over a swallow. Correct. So what is your intake about, like, I know we're supposed to do fresh um, vegetable, but what's your um, opinion about canned versus frozen? Yeah. Because I think a lot of people think that canned is better, but then other people think that frozen. And I just pick both because I don't have any idea. Yeah. <laughs> No, this is an awesome question um, that I've definitely gotten before. And again, one of those kind of confusing things because sometimes we'll, we'll hear things like, oh, that's not as good as this. Or um, So your answer, get excited for it. You're getting it today. Um, basically, um, so when we have fresh vegetables, um, a lot of times, um, you know, they might, the kind of the negatives of them, they might be a little bit more expensive. They're also sometimes ripened over transportation. Uh, but at the same time, you know, they taste good. I know when I cook with fresh vegetables, they, things tend to taste a little bit better. Uh, but again, personal preference. Um, with frozen vegetables, those are a great choice because they're picked at the, the peak of the season, so you don't have that transportation time. Um, a lot of times they're less expensive than some of the fresh um, vegetables. Um, as long as the only ingredient in the vegetable is the vegetable, like if you're buying broccoli, you just want it to say broccoli. You don't want any added salt, cheese, you know, that kind of thing. As long as what you're getting is the vegetable, then that's a great choice. Um, and my freezer is always stocked with vegetables because it's an easy way, you know, you're running late, maybe you didn't plan ahead quite as well, but hey, I know I got some veggies so I can make all the different components of the, the plate with that. Mm -hmm. And then as far as can goes, also a good choice. Um, I would just encourage people to get no salt added vegetables. Um, because a lot of times with canning, well, you, you see, you know, a lot of sodium. Um, if you have salt, salty vegetables in your uh, cab cupboards already, um, you can actually rinse the sodium off of it um, and reduce it by about 40%. So if you're like, oh, you know, I already have vegetables at home in cans, they do have sodium going forward, I'm going to get no salt added, um, you can just rinse them. And an another great choice. So honestly, you're eating, if you're eating vegetables, I'm happy, um, especially with those few little, you know, tweaks to look for. Um, and also only ingredient in the canned vegetable we want to be the vegetable. So yeah, excellent. Thank you. Okay. Um, and my mic is on this time. All right. So I want to just tell you what we have um, for you today. Uh, and everything is in your packet. But today we have the tomato farro pilaf. We have the blackened. Uh, it's actually pollock, all right, because the catfish wasn't available for us, but we have black and pollock. Uh, coleslaw, cauliflower grits, uh, vegan, vegetarian uh, collard greens. Um, typically, they will have some type of smoked meat in it, whether it be turkey or pork or, or something like that. Uh, we took it out because you don't only get just the flavor of that meat product, but you get the fat from it as well. So we took it out, and those are vegan, okay? We also have um, barbecue chicken breast the cauliflower potato salad, and some Old Bay shrimp. Um, please feel free to come up and nibble, navel, yum, yum in your tongue, all that good stuff. One table at a time, please. Okay, who's first? Well, thank you very much. Uh, do have to say that it's, the team helped me put that together today. Today was a crazy day. Thank you so much.
was very yummy. We eat, we eat with our eyes first, right? We eat with our eyes first, so. And obviously, you can do it without the mustard. You can do just a mayonnaise potato salad. However you make your potato salad, you will just use that recipe, and you will use the cauliflower. Yes. Discard it. Yeah, yeah. They're really bitter. Um, you could you could cook them, but you would have to do a lot to them to make them like palatable. You know. We do that. We do that often at the um, at the cafe. Yeah. Usually like shrimp and cauliflower grits, something like that we do.
All right. I want to... Uh, I want to just go over some closing statements here for everybody. So it looks like everyone's sitting down and enjoying uh, the feast that Chef Daryl has made for us. He's taken some final questions um, from uh, the participants here. I do want to um, just ask for one more round of applause for Chef Daryl here. And, uh, and uh, awesome job, awesome job. And for uh, Carrie Palumbo, our clinical dietitian, please. Awesome. So we, uh, we are at Griffin Hospital's uh, Center for Healthy Living, uh, which is up at Quarry Walk in Oxford, Connecticut. Um, this meal is part of a healthy living series that we're doing. Um, again, the focus is cooking and eating healthier. Um, and, you know, just to mention a few things, if you look at the, what Daryl had made, had made for us, you know, we went with leaner proteins. We have shrimp, uh, grilled chicken breast, um, the cod, the pollock. Uh, we took, when he made the collard greens, he took the, um, he eliminated some of the fat by not including a meat in there, which would have been uh, adding to the fat content normally. He made the uh, cauliflower potato salad, uh, substituting for the potato, which again, made it all healthier. Um, I've pulled the contestants here and they all love it. The quality's there, the texture there, the quality, uh, the food taste is there. So keep in mind on a, on a note that you can't eat healthier and the food can taste good it just takes a little a little time and a little education which is what we're offering here with our um, healthy living series so um, please join us next time when we run live with another program um, and again one more one more thing have a great night everyone and thank you for coming